There's, we're going to have a little activity in this presentation, so you're going to have to bear with me. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is, if you are right-handed, would you please stand up? Okay, take a look around. Okay, now if you'd be seated. If you are left-handed, would you please stand up? Okay, take a look around. Now you may be seated. Over here, you probably recognize this. These are the uh, tools of my torture in primary and secondary school. So I am left-handed. I, I freely admit that. So I'd come into a classroom, sit down at my right-handed desk, open my right-handed binder, proceed to take notes with a pen, a ballpoint pen. And a little known fact, you probably weren't aware of the fact that pens were designed to be pulled and not pushed. And then anyone who's left-handed, which it appears there's maybe two of us, uh, one of the things you recognize is the ink you were, you were writing with, or the lead if you had a pencil, ends up on the bottom of your hand. And finally, there's this torture device, scissors. The bane of my kindergarten existence. They would end up upside down and stuck on my thumb. Almost cost me another year in kindergarten. So my topic this evening, my topic this evening is laterality, sightedness. We tend to think of ourselves as left or right-handed by virtue of which hand we eat with or which hand we write with. However, what you're going to discover this evening is it's, more, it's far more complicated to the, than that. And in point of fact, we do a number of behaviors in which we favor the left side or the right side. So through this talk today, we'll discover how left or right-handed you truly are. To do that, there are a couple topics I need to touch upon. One, very briefly, is how our brain is organized. Secondly, I'm going to talk about culture's view of right and left-handed people. And finally, I'm going to talk about laterality, and we're going to do some more exercises and discover how right or left lateralized you truly are. As you probably know, we have two hemispheres of the brain, a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. And those two hemispheres are connected by a band of nerves referred to as the corpus callosum. The function of those nerves is really a neural pathway for the two hemispheres to talk to one another, for there to be communication to go back, back and forth. Our left hemisphere is primarily our logical hemisphere. It is a hemisphere that, where math is contained, analytical skills are contained, planning is contained, and for me as a communication professor, where verbal and written communication resides. It's where digital communication is. Our right hemisphere is our aesthetic hemisphere, our gestalt hemisphere. It is the hemisphere responsible for, for music, for sound, for rhythm, for perceptions, for feelings, for intuition. It is, again, from a communication perspective, it's our nonverbal hemisphere, it's our analogic hemisphere. Now, it's important to note that our left hemisphere controls our right side, and our right hemisphere controls our left side, that the two hemispheres are cross-wired. Now, that information I gave you is kind of a, a, a general uh, conclusion. In point of fact, both hemispheres have the capability of the other, just not nearly as refined and developed. Further, women tend to be less hemispherically specialized than men, meaning they have more of the capabilities in both hemispheres. And then there's the left-handed people, such as me. They're, they come in a couple different flavors. Either they are a mere opposite of right-handed people, such that language resides not in the left hemisphere, but in the right, and nonverbal abilities reside not in the right hemisphere, but in the left. Or it could be diffused, where all those abilities are housed in both hemispheres. Now, I say this because, in part, the way our brain is organized kind of gives a proclivity for us to be more right-handed than left-handed. Some people claim that the right hemisphere is the more active, or the left hemisphere is the more active hemisphere. Now, let's turn to culture and see what culture says about um, right-handedness and left-handedness. Um, we can turn to, the, to uh, religion first. When, when Jesus ascended to heaven, do anyone know what side of God he sat on? The right side. And Satan, 
the fallen angel had previous, previously occupied the left side. Uh, we can also look to other religions, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist. The left hand is unclean. But then we can look at language and see how this plays out in language. Anyone, if anyone knows French, do you know what the, the uh, word for left is in French? Right, gauche, which when we use gauche uh, here, what that means is tacky, tasteless, over the top. It's certainly not a positive uh, impression. Now, let's see who went to uh, Catholic school and had to take Latin like myself. Anyone know what the Latin word for left is? Very good, sinister. Again, not a very good label. But we can also see it played out in our common vernacular. So you guys have been really good. Now we're going to find out how many snowboarders we have here. Um, if you, most snowboarders will snowboard with their left foot forward, their right foot back. But if you're turned around, which some are, such that your left is back and your front foot is, is your right foot, does anyone know what style that's called? Right. That's goofy style. Again, not snowboarder. Uh, again, not very, not very flattering. Now, again, this is kind of like a sing-along. You have to play along with me here. If you are skipped over, if you're not included, what are you? You're left out. If an idea comes from nowhere, you have no idea where that came from. It comes from left field. And if I am correct, I am. I am right. Again, we see this kind of cultural influence that certainly favors the right side over the left side. This now brings us to laterality and more, more calisthenics for you in a few minutes. Um, later, many of our behaviors are asymmetrical. That is to say that it calls for action on one side of the body as opposed to the other side of the body. So for example, waving, shaking a fist, winking, um, uh, putting an eye in a telescope, crossing one leg over the other, or all lateralized behaviors in which you perform the activity on one side versus the other. Now, here's one of the things I find interesting about this. From infancy to about four, uh, four months or four years, we go back and forth. So for example, at uh, 16 weeks, children will, uh, infants will raise both hands for contact. Uh, at about 24 weeks, they will raise the left hand for uh, contact. And then again, at uh, 28 weeks, they're back to two hands. So they'll go back and forth, left, right, both, until about age four, when they begin to show a preference for the left side or the right side. And then by about age eight, it is reified. That is, they are left-handed or they're right-handed. Now, what's so fascinating to me about this is, given we're going left, right, both, you would expect to be 50-50. But as you demonstrated here, and what we see in the population, about 90% of the population is right-handed, and only 10% is left-handed. So why? Well, there are a couple of explanations. As I said before, some people will suggest because the left hemisphere, controlling your right side, is the more active hemisphere, we have a proclivity to, to a more right-handedness. We certainly cannot ignore the role of culture in this. We see that there's a cultural bias against left-handed. Now, this probably just illustrates how old I am. But in third grade, 1967, or 63, uh, I had a teacher, third grade teacher, who tied my left hand down to, on the desk so I couldn't use it to write. Because as she said, or pointed out to me, it was the devil's hand. So she was trying to force me to write with my right hand. Now, needless to say, there weren't a lot of apples on her desk. But and, and my parents were very pleased about that. But it shows you how strong that bias could be. And that was only 1963. So we see the influence of culture. Certainly tools, as I pointed out, the dastardly scissors, and almost any power tool I should not get around because they're designed for right-handed people. Uh, and, and we also can't ignore training. Uh, I eat with my left hand, I write with my left hand, I do almost everything left-handed except for sports, which I do all right-handed. Why? Because my first coach, my father, was right-handed, and that's how he taught me. So training plays a large role in it. So we, we can't ignore then the, the role of, of the brain, of culture, and training in, in taking us to one side or the other. Uh, so now it's that time to uh, discover how lateralized uh, you really are. Um, so let's start with this. I would ask you to wink. 
You don't know how weird that looks standing up here. <laughs> but, but thank you very much. Uh, OK, so uh, by a show of hands, how many people wink with their right eye? Left eye? Both? Oh, you're popular. Um, OK, let's, uh, let's do what I call the Dwayne Johnson, the rock, uh, uh, test. Uh, raise an eyebrow. How many people can raise their right eyebrow? Their left eyebrow? Can you do both? Oh, that's, that's pretty good. I can't do either. I just look like I, I'm, I'm surprised in a very pained way. Um, now, imagine I was talking very quietly and you're having difficulty hearing me. Which ear would you cup and turn to hear what I had to say? All right, another way we can get at this is uh, imagine your cell phone, take your cell phone out. Well, you don't have to do that now. <laughs> but which, which ear would you put that to? Should be the same one you would turn. We can also get to it in still another way. Uh, and, and this would be the opposite here. If you can imagine someone knocking on the door softly, or you hear a thud against the wall, or you hear a dripping faucet, which ear would you turn? It should be the opposite ear that you would use for your phone, because you're trying to identify an environmental sound. I have another test. And again, note what you're using, left or right, because these are lateralized behaviors. I'm going to ask you to count on your hand. So one, two, three, four. So do that. One, two, three, four. Note, note which finger you're using to count with. Okay, for me, it's my left, which would be consistent with everything I do. One, two, three, four. OK, now we're back to aerobics. I need you all to stand up. OK, we're going to do a couple things here. One is you may or may not be aware that you are hipped. Now, if we have to wait in line for a long time, one of the things we will do is rest on a hip. So which hip do you rest on? Now, for me, it's my right. Now, if we had to wait long enough, we would shift over to the other hip, but we'd come back to this hip. Okay? Now, uh, imagine you have an itch right dead center in the middle of your back. Which hand would you put back to scratch? Okay, so just note that. All right. Now, imagine, uh, clasp your hands and note which hand is holding the other. Okay? For, for me, it's my right hand is holding my hand. Now, if you don't think you do these behaviors consistently the same way, watch this. Okay? Take your hands, fold, put them together. Note which thumb's on top. Okay? Now, take them apart and put them the other way with the other hand on top. <laughs> Did you have to watch yourself do it? Okay, watch this one. Cross your arms. Okay, note which arm's on top. Okay, now take, take it apart and do it the other way. <laughs> and you thought you were left or right-handed. This is what I mean by lateralization. Uh, you, you can be seated now, thank you very much. Uh, you, see, you see an object. You see an object up there. I would ask you to point to that object and keep your hand up there. So, so point to that object. Okay. First, note what hand you're pointing with. And now, close one eye. Don't move it. Close one eye. And then close the other eye. It should have dramatically moved with one eye and not the other. The eye it doesn't move with is your dominant eye. Again, a lateralized behavior. Now, when you came here this evening, you were left or right-handed. So I sincerely apologize for introducing yet another gray area into your very complex lives. But I hope you've come away with an appreciation that you're not left or right-handed. You are more or less left or right lateralized. Now, I have one more activity for you that we typically do lateralize. I'm going to ask you to clap your hands really hard and note what's on top. Thank you very much.